Hey guys, what is up? It's Todd here. Today I'm going to be doing a solo Tormented Demons guide. Now this one is going to be my way of killing Tormented Demons as I've been pretty successful with uh, Tormented Demon killing recently. Yes, they may be slow kills and yes, there may be better ways to do it. But if you guys could just bear with me and just pop that in the comment section and let people know if there are better ways to do it. But this way has worked really, really, really well for me and I I'm just like enjoy doing it this way. So I'm just letting people know that you can do it this way um, and there is a simple way to go ahead and get yourself a nice pair of D limbs but other than that guys let's move on to the requirements and what you actually need to kill these guys okay guys so up on screen you'll see the first page of requirements that are needed to go and kill tormented demons as you can see up on screen you're gonna need to do the wild gothic sleep quest this actually requires 270 quest points but um, the quests up to it aren't too bad I suppose uh, in a day of questing you could probably get at least half maybe of those quests done or even in a week or so so it's not too bad and plus you can get some really good quests done for other items that you might need for or actually tormented demons themselves armor that you're going to be using is war priest you can usually get this from around about one hour or two hours of actually killing god wars monsters bandos samurak saradomin or armor deal all count now towards actually getting those war priest uh pieces D but do be wary it does just vary on your amount of luck within the god wars dungeon so it could even take longer than that but it is definitely suggested to actually get uh efficient kills at tormented demons but beast of burden is what i take i usually just take a pack out you can take healing familiars or even still titans but this is my like my tactics to kill and um tormented demons so once you get better you can maybe take a still titan or an iron titan or whatever you fancy but i take a beast of burden i take my pack yak um just to bank items and generally just keep keep my trips extended to that one hour worth of overloads the dark light is obviously to weaken the demons and actually kill them efficiently you really really need the dark light so don't forget it because otherwise you will be uh, putting yourself down to like 10 minute kills which is really really crappy so make sure you bring that dark light and i'll show you the way to weaken them later on in the video so the next page of requirements will be in just a second all right guys so up on screen is the next page of requirements that you're going to need and this is obviously weapons and uh, potions and all that sort of good stuff so as you can see on screen you're going to need 80 plus weapon stats uh, to actually make this even efficient you can go down to sort of staff a light area that sort of thing but try to stick to two-handed weapons because they are the best and most efficient to use down here if you've got to switch over to like two weapons uh like so if you switching over to two crossbows it just makes the kills a little bit more uh like slower i would guess is probably the best way to word to use um so definitely go for those two-handed weapons things like chaotic staff that sort of thing work absolutely perfectly and royal crossbow works perfectly for me you can upgrade to a zarite bow if you do have the cash stat boosting potions overloads extremes and supers work really really well uh, however you can choose not to use them and just wait until you get overloads overloads obviously boost all of the stats that you're pretty much going to use throughout the kill so it does make it more efficient but you could bring those stat boosting potions if you so wish 43 plus prayer now obviously it's a really really low requirement but generally all you need is the protect prayers you can use terminals and pieties if you so wish but again it's just more effort changing those uh terminals and pieties over for each uh each time you switch a combat style so generally i just choose to leave leave those and actually just pray one actual um protect so either mage or range depending on what attack they are using and even melee in some cases but i'll show you this later on in the video and show you the general technique when i go to kill them all right guys so up on screen you should be able to see me making a sapphire lantern all you're going to need to do to make this is buy a bullseye lantern it's the most expensive one on the ge uh, so if you just go ahead and buy one of those mine cost me 4k grab yourself a cut sapphire which you can also just cut a sapphire down or buy one off of the grand exchange if you use the cut sapphire on the bullseye lantern it will actually exchange the lenses and give you a lantern lens once you've got that uh, you're basically ready to go and you can just light your lantern next clip is going to be showing you guys how you can get two tormented demons with your sapphire lantern and all your gear ready to go okay guys so firstly let's talk about my setup now in my setup you can see that i've got my war priest on i've got myself an amulet which is the dragon rider amulet this can be switched out with a fury or whatever you choose to use uh fury or dragon rider or glory are absolutely fine a cape of some sort skill cape gives you a uh, uh, crit critical bonuses in each combat style that you will be using so that probably be best to go for if not a team cape 
it gives you critical bonuses in all skills uh, I think it's one percent so it's pretty decent um, go for a ring six age circuit is the best one to use berserker ring next um, you can use a seer's ring or an archer's ring but just go for the berserker's ring or the six age circuit uh, your pocket item can be a sign of life there's not really many hybrid scrimshaws out there that you can use um, I find that sign of life is probably one of the best ones just in case you know uh, I mean it does look newbie but just in case you actually do come about dying then you will just actually be respawned with about 2k health which isn't too bad uh, your aura can be anything vampirism penance uh, great runic accuracy uh, sharpshooter whatever you want but vampirism is probably the best seeming as you will get hit um, quite a bit if you make some mistakes on the press which is but vampirism will uh, actually correct for those so it's not too bad going to be bringing your bolts either a, a royal crossbow or a zarek bow if you get the zarek bow you're not going to need bolts um, and your chaotic staff so obviously when you switch out to your chaotic staff you're going to need some runes uh, your dark light and your sapphire lantern but i'll move on on to a inventory setup and an ability bar setup for you guys right now okay guys so let's quickly talk about the ability bar as you can see from my ability bar i have three basics from magic and three basics from range from one to four, uh, six i believe it is from then on i use two thresholds wild magic and snapshot are absolutely fine and obviously you can use those with the numpad number nine can be filled with either food guffix butterfly or even whatever defensive ability you wish to use um, or anything else that you wish to use with that uh, or, and then the last three slots are the most important as you can see I've got zero is my chaotic staff um, numpad plus is my royal crossbow and numpad subtract is dark light so with these uh, three keys they're all in close proximity apart from the fact that you can't use the enter key for the numpad so that's why I've used numpad, numpad subtract well I don't know why that took so long but yeah um, that's the reason why I've used that one but um, those ones can all be switched out for something that you prefer to use maybe you're using a laptop you could just use ASD to switch over to your weapons uh, but that's entirely up to you guys I'll let you uh, mull that over and think about what you want to use you definitely have to be on revolution for my kind of tactic guys you can use full manual but really to be honest a, a revolution absolutely does it for you and it's absolutely brilliant so I'm gonna now move on to an inventory setup for tormented demons okay guys so let's talk about a general inventory setup firstly let's start off with our beast of burden whether that be a pack yak to uh, terror bird or a tortoise in your familiar you're actually going to go ahead and just fill it up with food whatever food is best off for you monkfish shark rock tails i just tend to use shark they're cheaper than rock tails and they pretty much do the same job um going for overloads or stat boosting potions could be super rangers and super mages i go for one uh, two overloads and two prayer renewals just to get back a little bit of prayer and actually save yourself a bit of prayer here and there super restore flasks to actually renew your familiar rest prayer flask usually about eight prayer flasks or eight super restore flasks is absolutely fine a games necklace to actually get to tears of guffix sapphire lantern to get down there um, into tormented demons dark light to weaken the demons and a chaotic staff also going to need some runes in here and i don't know why i haven't done that but runes definitely is a must must uh, their weakness is fire spells so try to use fire spells if not an air spell is just fine um, an extra pack yaks and winter storages that can be swapped out for magic note paper if you're um hoping to actually like keep some of the drops if not just bring along some alkin runes uh out some of the rune maces and that sort of thing teleport to house um only reason for that is if you die um after your sign of life or if even if you die anyway you can just spam that um teleport house before you die you'll spawn in your house and um none of your items will have degraded any as such so yeah that's a decent setup just use that switch out items that you um can't have uh, to ones you can have um, um, other than that guys that's a pretty simple setup what i'm going to now show you is how to get there and I'm, then i'm going to show you some of their attacks and how to change prayers according to their attacks so i'll see you guys there okay guys so now let's focus on how to actually get to tormented demons what you're going to need to do is off obviously firstly grab yourself some runes otherwise you're going to be absolutely useless like i'm just doing right now just grab yourself some dust runes and some fire runes really quickly there we go lovely jubbly what you're going to need to do is teleport with your games necklace to tears of guffix simply you can do that by just rubbing tears of guffix going then then going to tears of guffix sorry Ugh, big mouthful there 
Uh, once you're at Juno, all you need to do is just run around this corner here and up towards the blue little light creatures. All you need to do there is use your sapphire lightning that you built earlier on in the guide uh, against one of the light creatures and go into the chasm. Once it's uh, come over to you and it's picked you up, it will drop you down the chasm. Once you're down at the bottom of the chasm, I'll meet you guys there and tell you what you need to do to prepare yourself to fight tormented demons. Okay guys, so once you're at the bottom of the chasm, all you need to do is run down here as you would have been taught in the quest anyway. Uh, it will tell you how to get to the, to the tormented demons. Um, once you get up to this temple part, uh, this is obviously where you put all the runes down and everything like that. Just climb up this wall and then climb up the second wall just there. Once you, um, as you actually run into tormented demons, a few things that you're going to need up on screen. As you can see, I've actually added them to my screen. Is prayers, your inventory setup, um, your constant institution abilities because some of them are quite good i mean you can use sacrifice over the top of some of the basics that i've popped up here because the sacrifice actually works across all combat styles which is really really good um and generally you've got regenerate there and guffix butterflies if you've done the world wakes quest now um if you haven't done the world's wake quest just uh sub substitute that something out with like maybe anticipate to keep your character in combat mode and keep your adrenaline ready to go right once you're here all you need to do is make sure that you're on revolution make sure you have yourself set out all of your keys for your switching of weapons and then also make sure that you're ready to pray range when you're ready to pray range you're ready to run in there you could also overload at this point what i tend to do is wait until um i'm actually at one of the lower spots and then it's easier to actually obviously um make the most out of the overloads that you have sometimes they'll hit with range sometimes they'll hit with mage as you're running up through here but generally you can't really do a lot about that their default attack is mage so just go ahead and use mage what i'm going to do now guys is i'm going to show you some of the lure spots um so i'm just going to pause really quickly and get some of the tormented demons ready to show you the lure spots okay guys so up on screen you can now see the three general tormented demon lure spots that you can use on this side of the uh temple now i tend i tend to use this side of the temple it's much easier if there's somebody here just world hop be nice and just let them uh, have that world and just go to a different one what they'll tend to do is what you see in there they do a mortar attack every so often that's to make uh that's just saying that you're a pussy and you should come out but um just go ahead uh, with that mortar attack there's not a lot you can do you'll get hit by it whatever but as you can see three lure spots and three different ways to kill them this first lure spot here if i move into this area here i'll just pray mage so i don't get attacked by this guy this will actually lure this guy into the spot so if he's walking down from where my mouse is now which i'll zoom into he'll actually get stuck behind this pillar all you need to do is just walk into this area here and just stand there and that will get him lured into that area there if you've got managed to actually get lucky and get this guy here all you need to do is he'll spawn in this area between these two pillars here which i'll make a box around uh what he'll do is he'll just walk down to here and a nice way to actually lure him is just to stand in this little area here and that will get him lured right into the middle this will also get these two stuck in here so they can't attack you if you want to kill this final one over here best thing for you to do is to run right over into here and into this gap if you have uh, that one right there attacking you the only thing that you can do is stand close be wary you will get attacked by melee range and mage so you have to do a lot more switching right now guys what i'm going to do is talk about the attack styles and how you can actually um how you actually know when one's going to attack with range and one's going to attack with mage all right guys so let's now move on to the kills and the techniques to actually kill these tormented demons they're going to use either mage range or melee now the only ways that you can tell if they're doing mage and range is they'll drag their arm over the top of their head there should be a clip up on screen now of them dragging their arm over the top of their head and doing a range attack if they're going to do mage they're just going to bob their head forward and that's actually going to indicate a mage attack if they're going to do melee which shouldn't be a major problem but sometimes it can happen just due to lure spots and how you've lured the tormented demons they're going to actually come up to you with their claws and swipe you you should see three long strike lines across your screen that means they're meleeing you probably a good idea to actually pray um pray melee because they do actually hit really really hard um with these preys with all of their attack styles they actually can hit a thousand and just a little bit more over the top with those so try to pray because it is really really beneficial to actually the how long you last on your trip and 
and how much food you actually use okay guys so up on screen is an example of what you need to do towards the start of the kill now i've explained the methods and the attacks that they actually use so now i'm going to explain how you can get about the first part of the kill now generally what they're going to do is have a shield around them you need to get rid of the shield the only way that you can do that is because they are protecting melee and you have a mage and a range attack style you'll have to either use the crossbow or the chaotic staff to actually get this protect from mage off usually it's about 500 life points and then you can change that protect prayer so you can use your dark light once you've used your dark light you can just resume as normal and as you can see up on screen hopefully that made sense to you guys if not there will be a little uh, like sort of note on the side of the screen just explaining those steps for and you guys can just follow those each time you hit around about 3,000 you can hit more than 3,000 but most of the time it is 3,000 they'll switch over to their different attack style at that point you want to switch over to your other combat style and use that combat style until again they pray mage or they pray range and then switch over to range or mage depending on how you do the kill again there should be a video clip down below so it shouldn't be too hard to follow and you should be able to kill tormented demons by the end of this guide Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed this Tormented Demons guide. Um, as you can see, it was pretty much all of my kind of like techniques and everything put into it. So hopefully it does serve you well and you guys have actually learned something. If you want to know any more about the learning or anything like that on the other side of the temple and on this side of the temple a little bit more, check out a guide in the description. It's done by Uzi Plays RS and his guide is absolutely fantastic. Um, and this is probably going to be an absolute shambles compared to his. But nonetheless, I hope you guys learned something. Have a great day, whatever you're doing, guys, and happy runescaping as always.